Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, we're taking a look at this thing here. This is the latest thing from Immersion RC, the RF Power Meter V2. Now, this is one of those things that you don't realize you need until you get one. And actually, I had the original version of the RF Power Meter and I bought it a couple of years ago. Quite expensive, the best part about £100, but it has come in very handy those times when I've needed it. But this one had an external battery, it had an external attenuator and there was a lot of feedback given about a couple of things in particular around the version 1 that's meant that the version 2 is out. So I'm very pleased to say I've got my hands on a version 2 and I just wanted to go through what it is, how it works and also what the advantages are over the version 1 and talk a little bit about how having one of these in your bag if you're flying is probably a good idea. Now this new version is a lot less expensive than the original one, which is good, and it also is pocket sized as well. It's kind of the size of a large pack of chewing gum, which does mean that you can keep it in your bag. I found with the older RF power meter, I was leaving it everywhere just because it's such a bulky piece of kit and you also had to plug an external battery in as well. With this one, there is an internal battery. When you get it, you just pull the tab out of the bottom that makes the battery connection and then a brief press on the power button and it'll burn burst into life. Brief press on the power button again and it'll turn it off. And that makes it an awful lot more portable, along with the fact that it now has an internal attenuator. So that thing on the version 1 that looked like something out of the Jetsons or a 1950s sci-fi soap opera is actually the attenuator and you use that when you were trying to uh, measure higher powers and that absorbed some of the energy and dissipated it as heat so all that energy didn't go into the device for measurement. But that's all internal as well but that's also given it a big advantage. This new one is far more accurate than the version 1. And that's due to the fact that that attenuator is internal. And because of the manufacturing variances of those original attenuators, even though they were manufactured in the USA, it did mean that each of the version 1s could be a little bit out. But the version 2s are calibrated in the factory against an NST certified device, uh, over 200 data points. So they're pretty spot on to so about half a dBm. The new one has a full graphic display as opposed to the simple text based thing that the original one had. And that also allows it to do different things like graphs and plots and stuff for duty cycles, which is the difference between how far a signal is transmitting and not transmitting. And that duty cycle can be interesting to look at, particularly if you're looking at actually RC radio transmissions. And that brings me on to my next point. It is able to look at a much wider range of frequencies than the original one. This one has a range of frequencies that will allow you to look at the standard FPV stuff will be in the 5.8 and also look down in the 2.4 gigahertz band as well. Check the manual for a full list of specifications. But that's also handy if you want to check whether or not your radio is working as well as your FPV gear. With that internal attenuator, it can handle some pretty high loads, about one watt of FPV power with that internal attenuator working. Be careful, this is designed to kind of plug in and for you to test things. It's not the kind of thing you're going to leave plugged in for 20, 30 minutes at a time. Uh, that attenuator will warm up as it dissipates energy. And as it warms up, the resistance of the attenuator will change over time. So it will get less accurate. So the best thing to do is kind of use it at room temperature and plug it in, take your measurement and then unplug it and off you go. There are quite a few modes of operation. Let me talk about these on the next slide because it was only when I started using this and playing with it and actually reading the manual, yes, I do read manuals, that I figured some of this stuff out. So you can, of course, use it for direct connection to your video transmitter for accurate power measurement. And that's where rather than plug your VTX into an antenna, you plug it into the RF power meter V2 and power everything up. And then you're looking at the average power output. And that will tell you whether or not your 25 milliwatt video transmitter is actually sending 25 milliwatts. And that is really handy to check because occasionally you might accidentally power up your video transmitter without the antenna on. You might have a crash where the antenna gets smashed off your video transmitter and video transmitters hate being powered on without the antenna attached. So have you completely knackered, technical term, your FPV transmitter? By plugging this in, you can find that out. 
You can also attach the little supplied rubber ducky antenna onto it and use it for relative power as well. So there's a big explanation of this in the manual, but the idea is if you know that one of the quads in the lineup as part at the start of a race is running at 25 milliwatts, then by using the rubber ducky antenna and placing it by the side of the antenna, you get a relative power output. And then what you can do is very quickly walk down the line and put the RF power meter using that same rubber ducky antenna by the side of each of the FPV antennas on all of the other quads and see whether or not the reading is about the same. If it is, that probably means that all of the other quads are on the same power level as the first one. As the first one was 25 milliwatts, you should be good to go. Also very handy to spot if one of the video transmitters has got an issue and is only sending out a fraction of the power that it's supposed to. So you're going to lose FPV footage as soon as you get about 10 feet away. Or if somebody is being very naughty and using much higher illegal power levels that you can get spotted too. You can also use it to check the duty cycle of your radio. Again, by changing the actual frequency down to the one that the radios are working, which is the kind of the 2.4 gigahertz range, you can actually see the duty cycle. And you can see the difference between a Spectrum radio running standard DSMX protocols or things like the FR Sky radios or Futaba or whatever. And it's quite interesting. You can also see differences in the duty cycle between having the protocol set for D8 or D16 and also how many channels you're actually sending. Two other things you can do with this as well. You can also use it as a model finder. If you pop a directional antenna on the front of this, something like a patch antenna that's got like a 30, 40 degree or a really nice helical antenna that has a much narrower cone of reception, then if your model has gone down, then you can just pop this out your pocket, turn it on, sweep around and then use it to find your model. Now, of course, you can do that. I've got videos showing how to do that with things like the Tyrannus radio. Or if you have a diversity set of goggles, you can unplug the omnidirectional receiver on the diversity setup in the goggles and you can just use that patch. But I really like the idea of leaving all that kit somewhere safe as you trog out across the fields to try and find where your quad or your plane went down. The last thing it's useful for is also checking relative sensitivities of different antennas. Now I'm going to use this in a video in a couple of days time to do some testing on a new antenna from one of my favorite antenna suppliers. So stay tuned for that in a couple of days. But it also means that I can not only talk about anecdotally how much better it seems to be performing, but I can use the RF power meter to actually show you some objective tests rather than just the subjective ones of what it's been like to fly with it as well. And you can see exactly how much more sensitive it is by looking at the decibel reading on the screen. And by moving the RF meter around an antenna, it'll also give you a good idea of what the dispersal patterns are and what the drop off is if you're using a directional antenna. So you have a very good idea of what the actual cone of reception looks like and what area you should be flying out in front of yourself with those kind of directional antennas. So hopefully that's useful for those of you that have been thinking about this. I found the original clunky version very, very handy, but this is something that's going to go in my case along with my Tyrannus and my FPV goggles and is going to go to the field with me all the time. It's one of those bits of equipment that you might not need it every time you go out, but when you do, it'll be worth its weight in gold. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.